I said I don't want to sound complacent. Uh, if we, if I, if I were to say that, uh, for example, for for countries like we call it stress countries, Italy, Fran Italy, Spain, and so on, to be in the euro is a fantastic success today. They would look at me with the, at least to say, the skeptical eye. Um, the unemployment is very high, and uh, youth unemployment is especially high. And then the, uh, the issue is, is it fault of the euro, or do we, are there other causes to that? And uh, if we look at that, we see that two things explain. I mean, we had unemployment. In the UK, you had unemployment by, by and large as much as we had in the rest of the euro area, but it was not especially concentrated in the young sector of the population. Uh, what explains the high level of youth unemployment in Spain and Italy, for example, is what I've read this morning in the Financial Times, when these two countries rank last in uh, education. So basically, the skills that uh, have been taught are not the ones that are being useful to, be, to get a job. Um, and then there is another reason would explain why, for example, in France, youth unemployment is also high, even though France has a good educational system. And uh, this has to do with the legislation that's been introduced at the beginning of the year 2000s in all these countries. In order to make the labor market more flexible, they, these governments had uh, introduced flexibility through in the way of short-term contracts, three months, even one month in Spain, um, in, uh, only for the young, only for the new entrants, and at the same time protected everybody else. So millions of jobs were created, and then as soon as the crisis struck, the first jobs to be cut were the jobs of the young people. So that's the second answer. There is a wrong type of legislation which has put the weight of labor flexibility only upon the young.